Hello, my name is Christy Valentine and I am doing the project on understanding students with ADHD. So ADHD is considered attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. In this presentation, I'm going to explain a little bit about the disability of ADHD, um, answer some of the questions that were probed in the module, and then of course emphasize the important aspects and characteristics of the health impairment. So the first question that we had was, how many students in the U.S. are currently being treated or served um, for ADHD? So I read the, um, the text, and according to the text, 6 to 9% of children and 3 to 5% of adults are identified with having ADHD. So these numbers are a bit high considering how many people are living in the U.S. right now. Um, I found this graph on the CDC website, and these are um, the number of children who have ever had ADHD in the U.S. So if you can see, in 2016, approximately 6.1 million children had ADHD. Um, I thought this was important because you can kind of see the increase in diagnosis since 2003. It's dropped a little bit since 2011, but it's still relatively high. Um, and then also according to CDC, um, the percent of children taking ADHD medication was 5.2%. So about 77% of children were receiving treatment. So this number is not 100%, and I think that is because there's varying degrees of ADHD. So some may not need specific treatments, some may be able to cope with it on their own. Um, so not all children diagnosed with ADHD are being treated by either medication or behavioral treatment. Um, the next question was, how has the number of students identified increased in recent years, and what are some of the reported reasons for that increase? So, after reading the text, I found out that rates have doubled or even tripled since the 1990s, and that is a huge increase, like way too much. And I think there's a few main factors that are playing into the role of the um, increase in the diagnosis, and I think the one major reason is that ADHD is being overdiagnosed by teachers and by health uh, professionals. ADHD has a huge spectrum of symptoms, and I think many students fall under the categories of a lot of these symptoms. And because academics are getting so, the standards are so much higher in academics, and these students who display these behaviors that are and ADHD are having trouble reaching those standards and excelling. I think the first thing that you know teachers or parents might think to do is take them to the doctor, tell them about these symptoms, and then the doctors give them medication. And I think that there's a lot of other things we could do, especially us as future teachers, to um, maybe s stop the behaviors in a way that they wouldn't have to go get diagnosed or wouldn't have to go get a treatment for maybe something that could be um, deflected in another way. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe like coming up with classroom modifications in order to make behaviors less likely. Something such as that. I think there's just an overdiagnosis and ADHD is being normalized. It's becoming something so many children have. It's just, it's kind of desensitized to it actually being a health impairment. Um, the next question was, what are the specific behaviors and characteristics of students with ADHD, and in what way do these characteristics make it difficult for students to learn and participate in school? Um, there's three main things a student has to have in order to have ADHD, and that means there needs to be a persistent pattern of an attention or hyperactivity and OCD, needs to be frequent and more severe than a typical student. So those three things have to be in play in order to have a diagnosis. So it has to happen more often than not probably and it has to be more severe than what a typical student might display. So I made a little list of some of the major behaviors that we might see in a student with ADHD such as problems with paying attention and focusing, problems with listening, engaging, fidgeting and talking excessively, running around, blurting out, interrupting, etc, etc. These characteristics definitely cause issues with the education system because if they're displaying all these um, behaviors so frequently, they're not 
um, gaining any of the education that's going on around them. They're more focused on what's going on on the ceiling or, you know, they're not really gaining that, um, those academics that they need to have to strive for success and with the expectations and seniors being high and they're not being able to reach them, it, it's going to bring down their grades and their pro productivity and motivation is going to be lower so they're not going to be getting their work done. So I think all those things kind of go into why um, ADHD can be so detrimental to a student's success. And then the next question was, do all students with ADHD demonstrate the same characteristics or degree of behavior? And the easy answer to this is no, they do not. There are three different types of ADHD, the prominently inattentive type, which is less noticeable, um, less disruptive, but these students still suffer because they're having trouble focusing, motivation, productivity. They're easily distracted. They're not they're not getting that information they need. Um, the, the predominantly hyperactivity and positivity type is the one that's more noticeable, the one that we might, um, like the, the poster child of ADHD might be having hyperactivity and positivity type, and that's the fidgeting, not being able to sit in your chair for five minutes, um, just needing to constantly be doing something. So I think that's the one we might kind of think in our minds what ADHD might be, but actually the ma the majority of students who have ADHD have a combined type, so like a mixture of both inattentive and hyperactivity and positive types. So it's important to kind of know that there might be several different behaviors from each one in a student who has ADHD. Degrees also vary widely. Some students contain mild symptoms while others are very severe. Um, some students might need an IEP, some students might not. Some students might need treatment, some students might not. It all depends on the degree of the ADHD. Um, students who don't qualify for an IEP might have something on a 504 plan, which also creates those modifications and things they need for the classroom for their educational success. Um, next one is according to IDEA 2004, under what category are students with ADHD identified? And that answer is they are under the other health impairments category. Um, I have the definition for what other health impairments means. It means a limited strength, vitality, or alertness, including a heightened alertness to environmental stimuli. That results in limited alertness with respect to the educational environment. And that's something I found within the text. And these characteristics definitely create adverse effects on academic achievements. Um, and then the last question was, Effective class-wide interventions for all students, especially for those who display characteristics of ADHD. I think this is a really important one to focus on because it's helpful for not just students with ADHD, but it's especially helpful for them. Um, I think the number one thing would be differentiated instruction. We learn a lot about this within this class, and that's just making sure every student has the modifications and things they need to be successful in the classroom, um, making sure students are able to learn in a way that's best for them. Goal setting is huge. Um, coming up with goals, letting the child know about the goals, and then coming up with ways to achieve those goals. Um, I think learning effective work skills is huge. I think setting up the basis or the foundation of just learning and, you know, being organized, being neat, telling them the standards and expectations. You can't be good at math or science until you have that basis laid, laid down of how to be effective when you're working. Of course, classroom modifications, um, students with ADHD might need the extra breaks, sitting in different place in the classroom that's less distracting, um, extra time for work or reduced amount of work, so on and so forth. Just any modification that can um, help enhance their academics. Errorless learning is something I learned about through the text. Um, it's kind of a way of learning that helps create, oh, um, always getting kind of the, the answer that they should get. Um, instructions are immediately followed by a prompted correct response, which which is then followed by positive reinforcement. I think that's a cool way to teach students, especially with ADHD, because it helps with the motivation, the productivity, so on and so forth. And then for my last slide, I just put some of my citations. I got some information from CDC website, from MIT, in New York Times, and then of course from the text. So um, 
yeah, ADHD is definitely rising and I hope that we can figure out some ways to treat our students in a way that maybe isn't medic medication. That way um, the overdiagnosis is a little lessened. But overall, um, I think that I learned a lot from doing this and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you.